Doing well in your career but looking to do better? At DBS, we want you to get to where you want to go with part-time postgraduate, evening degrees and professional diploma courses taught by people as successful at what they do as they are at teaching it. Kickstart your career with real-world learning. Apply today at dbs.ie. The Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax products for home and industry present Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, B. Benaderet, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The script is by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie. The music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. Isn't it a nice feeling to have the dishes done, the kitchen tidy, and nothing to do but sit back and enjoy yourself? Was it much of a job to leave the kitchen floor clean and sparkling? It was no trouble at all if you're one of the millions of women who use Johnson's Glow Coat. That's the beauty of Glow Coat. You just wipe your floor with a damp cloth or mop, and all the day's dirt and spilled things disappear like magic. And it's so easy to apply that protective film of Glow Coat. There's no rubbing or buffing. Just pour some on the floor, spread it around, and let it dry. That's all there is to it. Glow Coat shines as it dries, without streaking, leaving a lovely, smooth sheen. The attractive colors in your linoleum are restored, and the bright patterns stand out like new again. Your linoleum lasts much longer, too, because Glow Coat gives such a wonderful, tough protection. Try it, won't you? And be sure it's the genuine Johnson self-polishing Glow Coat. <laughs> Arguing with a banker is like riding a horse on a merry-go-round. You never get any place. But here on the corner of 14th and Oak Street, Wistful Vista, who do we find beating his verbal brains out against Mr. McDonald of the Third National Bank but Mr. McGee of Fibber McGee and Molly? And furthermore, McDonald, if you weren't a hide-bound, frozen-pushed old nickel nurse that wasn't too lazy to put in an honest day's work, you wouldn't close that bank at 2.30 every day. Now, just a minute, McGee. Our banking hours... Banking are... hours. Ah, uh, 10 o'clock in the morning till 2.30 in the afternoon. Four and a half hours. You call that an honest day's work? What do us depositors pay you 2.5% on our savings account for? So you can... You don't pay us. We pay you. I don't care who pays who. My point is that you ought to keep your bank open from 9 to 5 at least. So a busy man and like me... when would we do our clerical work? From 5 till midnight? If you had the sense of a barn owl, you'd oh, realize... Oh, clerical work, eh? <laughs> Fixing up the books, eh? <laughs> no wonder you pull down the shades at 2.30 every afternoon. <laughs> My George, are I... you insinuating that my bank is dishonest, McGee? If the shoe fits, lace up your tongue, Morgie Tom. <laughs> That's enough, McGee. Step into this alley and I'll show you. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What time is it, McDonald? Half past. Oh, my gosh. I got to get home. I'll see you later, McDonald. <laughs> and what did Mr. McDonald say when you started to take off your coat, did he? <laughs> He ran like a rabbit. <laughs> One more word out of him, and I'd have slapped him into a Peruvian debenture. Oh, uh, uh, say, McGee, I almost forgot. Uh? Uh, while you were gone, Red Cross headquarters called up. Oh. You were the captain for this neighborhood. For this neighborhood? Sure. You mean they didn't make me chairman of the whole Wistful Vista Drive? Why, those ungrateful, short-sighted... No, no, dearie. You know they have the same chairman every year. You mean... Mr. McDonald of the Third National Bank. <laughs> McDonald, eh? Yes. Incidentally, he's on your list to collect from, mm. too. And uh, it's usually his check that puts this neighborhood over the top, you know. <laughs> That's kind of like me, ain't it? 
What do you mean? I'm the kind of a lint head that picks a fight with Henry Ford in the morning and invents a new kind of a spark plug in the afternoon. <laughs> well, I'm sure Mr. McDonald won't let your little argument affect his Red Cross donation, dearie. You know, he's a very fair man. That guy couldn't be fair with five gallons of peroxide. Oh, well. I won't call on him myself, that's all. I'll have one of my insubordinates do it. Mm -hmm. By the way, how many workers am I in charge of? <laughs> one. One? Just one? Who is it? You. <laughs> Me? You mean I gotta work this whole neighborhood all by myself? And I gotta call on old McDonald? Why, my gosh, I won't... Come in. Oh, hello, Dr. Gamble. So nice to see you. Hello, Molly. And good afternoon to you, leak cheek. <laughs> good afternoon, Doctor. Mighty decent of you to stop in, sir. Won't you sit down, Doctor? Excuse me, I must be in the wrong house. <laughs> Don't be alarmed, Doctor. Himself here has merely taken on a little dignity. I have just been appointed a special field director for the American Red Cross, Doctor, in charge of accumulating funds in this particular territory to maintain our national and international activities in the service of humanity. The appointment was made at national headquarters in Washington, I presume. It's quite likely, Doctor. <laughs> Yes, I think so, too. No local official would be guilty of such a colossal blunder. <laughs> well, you couldn't collect broken glass in a picnic grove. Oh, uh, no, I don't know about that, Dr. Gamble. He's pretty persuasive when he gets started. You're doggone right I am, Ether Drum. <laughs> when I get warmed up, I can talk the feathers off a duck. Which reminds me... Of what, Droop Snoot? <laughs> of the fact that you're in my territory. Territory, <laughs> Which means I gotta get your Red Cross donation, Aerosmith. The Red Cross is, you know, it, what's this? My check. Heavenly day, so quick. Thank you, Doctor. Doggone it, you might have at least let me finish my sales talk, you point killer. <laughs> I don't need any sales talk, Lippy. Nobody knows more about the work of the Red Cross than we bromide and bandage boys. And if I can help ease the worry of one lonesome GI in a hospital gown, I'll consider it a beautiful investment. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to get back to the hospital. I have a major operation to perform. Appendix stop? Oh, no. Just have to sprinkle a little sulfur on a bruised knee. Oh, I thought you said it was a major operation. It is. Major Flanagan. Skinned his leg. Skinned his leg marching in the St. Patrick's Day parade. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mills in the orchestra and laughing on the outside.
skip him to later. Why? Do you think your little argument with Mr. McDonald will affect his donation? Affect it? That guy wouldn't donate me his used pipe cleaner. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Here's one of my prospects list here. Now, now, let me see. Adam, I am neighborhood captain for the Red Cross and I'm calling for your donation. In times of disaster, flood, or famine, the American Red Cross is Jerry at the rat hole. The Red Cross is your representative in its work to relieve the suffering of humanity all over the world. And I... Yes, what's on your mind, kid? Well, heavenly days, it's the old timer. Hi, old timer. Look, I represent the Red Cross, and I'm here to... Hey! Oh, the Red Cross, eh? Great little outfit, the Red Cross. Cutest nurses in the South Seas. <laughs> when I was out there with the sea bees, I Now, always... please, please, Mr. Old Timer. We're here for your donation. Yes, you'll appreciate the fact that the Red Cross still operates almost 650 servicemen's clubs. Germany, France, Japan, and all over the South Sea. The war hasn't ended for the Red Cross. Hey! He says that... The war hasn't ended for the Red Cross. <laughs> no, three kids. Anytime there's trouble, they get there on the double. I never will forget one little Red Cross nurse back there in the Solomon. Name of Gracie. If it hadn't been for Gracie, I wouldn't be here now. Save your life, did she? Yep. Gracie pulled me through, kid. Uh, were you wounded, old timer? No, daughter. Overstayed my leave and tried to crawl back into camp under the fence. <laughs> I got stuck, and it was little Gracie who pulled me through. <laughs> Yeah, but look, about the Red Cross, old-timer, we need... More girls like Gracie. That's what you need, Johnny. Uh, was she pretty, old-timer? Pretty? Daughter, she was prettier than a moonbeam shining through a busted bulldozer onto a mess of kelp. <laughs> <laughs> we was in love for all those seniors. <laughs> you were, eh? Hey, hey! <laughs> yes, we were. I was in love with her, and she was in love with a gunner's mate, third class. <laughs> very third class, if you ask me. Well, that's all very romantic, old-timer, but now... Hey, I can't stand here scuttle-buttling with you kids. I gotta get down to the post office. Gotta mail my Red Cross donation. Hey, that's what I came to see you about. Hey! He said that... Well, then maybe you wouldn't mind mailing it in for me. Here it is right here. Thanks, kid. <laughs> get much chance to practice your sales talk, do you, dear? Ain't it disgusting? The minute I open my mouth, somebody slaps a check into it. <laughs> At this rate, I never will be prepared for old man McDonald. And he's the nastiest... Wait a old... minute, dearie. Huh? This house is on your list. Who lives here? Let me see. Hmm. Lou Wacy. You know a Lou Wacy? No, but maybe a stranger will let you get a few words in. Come on. Adam, I represent the Red Cross in this toy carry. Territory. Hmm? In this vicinity. The Red Cross, as you know, must raise $100 million in the 1946 drive. And, oh, good afternoon, madam. We represent... Who are you calling madam, mister? Ooh. Oh, uh, pardon him, I'm sure. <laughs> are you Mr. Wacy? No, I'm Myrna Loy. Mr. Wacy left on the 12 o'clock rocket for Mercury. <laughs> He's in the thermometer business, you know. Now, what do you want? I'm busy. If you'd shut that big muskrat trap of yours for a minute, smart guy, we'd tell you. We're collecting for the Red Cross, which is you well, know... Well, why didn't you say so? Here's my check. Sorry, I couldn't make it more. <laughs> well, we're doing a fine business in a rude sort of way, aren't we? <laughs> Doggone it, don't anybody want to know why they're giving to the Red Cross? Well, I think most people know about the work of the Red Cross, sweetheart. They've been doing business at the old stand for a long time now. Here's your next call, number 94. Okay, come on. How do you do, madam? The Red Cross has asked us... Oh, the Red Cross. Here's my check. Thank you for calling. <laughs> you may close your mouth now, dearie. <laughs> it's all over. I'm getting tired of this. Next place we go to, I'm just going to ring the bell and stick out my hand. <laughs> That'll probably be the place where they have a fox terrier which is allergic to human fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. By George, I'm going to get in one sales pitch if I have to. Oh, hi, Junior. Just the guy I wanted to see. Hello, pal. Hello, Molly. Out for a walk? No, Mr. Wilcox. 
We're out collecting for the Red Cross. And you're on my list, Junie. Now look, let me tell you a few things about the Red Cross. In the first place... Oh, you don't have to tell me anything about the Red Cross, pal. <laughs> and incidentally, here's my check, all made out. What's the matter? As much as I could spare, pal. A little more, as a matter of fact. Oh, the check is very generous, Mr. Wilcox. I don't think that's what's annoying you. Well, speak up, friend. Don't just stand there and glower at me. Look, Junior, I worked very hard whipping up a sales talk about the Red Cross. <laughs> and what happened? Every place I go, the minute I open my ruby lips, somebody puts their money where my mouth is. <laughs> Nobody will let me talk. It ain't fair. Well, maybe you've got the wrong approach, pal. Basically, you know, all selling is the same. In the first place, you've got to have confidence in your product. Oh, he has, Mr. Wilcox. He knows the Red Cross is the finest. Now, like me with Johnson's Wax, I'm selling quality. I'm selling cleanliness. I'm selling beauty. I'm selling a service as well as a product. Well, that's very like the Red Cross, the service they give And when I tell about the amazing number of things that Johnson's Wax is useful for, yeah, but I feel that I'm a great deal more than just a salesman. Yeah, I'm a friend of the family. Yeah, but what that got to do with... Uh, Why, with wax protected floors, furniture, luggage, picture frames, windowsills, radios, and golf bags to talk about, I'm not just a guy that's peddling wax. The heck you ain't. <laughs> I'm a front man for civilized living. I've got a sample case full of pride and hospitality. Well, what would you do, Waxy? If every time you rang a doorbell, the door opened, somebody grabbed the Johnson's wax out of your hand, shoved some dough into your mitt, and slammed the door. Yes. Now, what would you do then, Mr. Wilcox? Oh, that never happens. You don't, eh? No. I never even have to ring the bell. Hmm? Oh. One woman this morning came running halfway up the block to meet me. And then after she'd tried the Johnson's wax, she wanted to adopt me. Oh, really? No, O'Reilly. <laughs> <laughs> but my wife didn't want to be Mrs. Harlow O'Reilly, so I didn't go through with it. See you later, kid. <laughs> cleared that with Danny Kay. <laughs> I don't know, but I thought he was very encouraging, dearie. You know, you can't help it if people start buying before you start selling. Come on now, here's our next stop. Oh, this is car share talk. Oh my gosh, she ought to be good for quite a slug of moolah. She gave 300 bucks last year. Good afternoon. Now listen, give her the old sales talk, Ted, and maybe she'll make it 500. Just watch me, kiddo. Fireball McGee, the demon salesman. I'll work myself into such a lather you could shave me with a shovel. When I get through here, I'll be so hot I'll give old man McDonald a vocal bulldog that'll have him. Yes! Hi, a witherspoon? Remember us? In what connection, sir, may I ask? Oh, come off it, witherspoon. Mrs. Carstairs has had us to dinner any number of times. Mr. and Mrs. McGee. I am not witherspoon, madam. Witherspoon is no longer employed here. I am robot. No kidding. Say, that's a beautiful catalog you and Shears put out. <laughs> yes, sir, I've spent many a long summer afternoon. McGee. Huh? Oh. <laughs> McGee, please tell Mrs. Carstairs that, uh, our, uh, Witherspoon, uh, please tell <laughs> Mrs. Carstairs that Mr. and Mrs. McGee would like to see her a few minutes, will you? Immediately, madam. Will you come in, please? Thanks, Robo. Robux, sir. <laughs> I shall see if Mrs. Carstairs is at home. <laughs> <laughs> hey, get a load of that walk, will you? He's either had military training or had his hips lifted. <laughs> You know, McGee, I'm, I'm glad we don't have a butler. Yeah? They always look like somebody had just cooked some cabbage in the next room. <laughs> and I often do. Yeah. I'd always be afraid Creature would keep us after school. However, in a stuffy old mausoleum like this, it is... Oh, hi, Carsty. How do you do, Mr. McGee? Good day, Mrs. McGee. How nice to see you. Tell Millicent why you are here, McGee. Oh, pray do, Mr. McGee. And then you must excuse me. I'm packing for a flying trip to the West Coast. No kidding, Carsey. Business or pleasure? Oh, both, Mr. McGee. Uh -huh. I have a niece in San Diego I haven't seen for many years. And Mr. Carstairs has an interest in a large walnut ranch. Walnut ranch? Imagine that. Have any trouble with nut rustlers, Millicent? 
No, my dear. But the Walnut Growers' annual convention is rather exciting. It is? I'll see that you get invitations to our next nut meet. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Millicent. I, I hope you have a nice trip. I'll bet you won't know your niece either, Carsey. Kids grow up awful fast in them tropical climates, they say. <laughs> oh, I know it, Miss McGee. I once saw an actor named Victor mature one afternoon in Hollywood. <laughs> Tell me, what can I do for you? All right, McGee, now's your chance. Do your best. Darcy, for a lot of men and women, the war is not yet over. And for them, the American Red Cross is the link to... Oh, the... I'm so glad you mentioned that, Mr. McGee. I have a check here all made out. Do you know to whom I should send it? Well, uh, we'll take it, Millicent. That's what we came for. Thank you so much. Come on, McGee. McGee, come on, we're through. I, uh, I, I, uh, thanks, Darcy. Have a nice trip. Thank you. Good day. How big is the check, McGee? I don't know. I can't read it till I stop crying. <laughs> and now the King's Men sing Ken Darby's Make Mine Music. Make mine music and my heart worrying about your sales talk to Mr. McDonald, McGee? Yeah, my gosh, I haven't had a chance to get any sample reactions from people. And I need McDonald's big check to make my quota. Well, now, here's your last chance to practice your pitch, dearie. Mary Latrivia's house. Oh, that's good. Your Honor, I represent the Mayor from Well, hello there, Molly. Hello, McGee. Come in. Uh, no, thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is just a brief business call. I'm the captain for Red Cross donations in this neighborhood, Latrivia. Good for you, McGee. Tell me all about it. Are you kidding? <laughs> Why should I be? You mean you uh, want to hear a few facts about the Red Cross, Your Honor? I think it would be very interesting. <laughs> well, uh, in, uh, in the first place, Latrivia, to carry on their work, the Red Cross has got to have a hundred million bucks this year for overseas, home front, and disaster activity. This is the most important... Oh, uh, excuse me a minute, McGee. Huh? Uh, here's my personal check. Uh, now, uh, what were you saying? Does this matter now? This is the most discouraging thing I ever tried to do in all my life. What? Hey, what's the matter with your foot, La Trivia? Oh, oh, that's why I'm home at this hour, McGee. I stopped on the street to pat a horse, and it stepped on my foot. <laughs> it was a big gray horse. 
You don't have to talk. You don't have to talk baby talk to get sympathy for us, Your Honor. Baby talk? But I wasn't. Anyway, what difference does it make what color the horse was? I didn't even mention the color of the horse. You said it was a big dray horse. <laughs> but it was a big dray horse. It was a roan. It wasn't alone if you were there with it. <laughs> I didn't say it was alone. I said it was a roan, a brown horse. Oh, well, that's a horse of a different color. <laughs> What's a horse of a different color? A roan. First you say it's dray, and then you say it's brown. And but then... it was brown. A big brown dray. A big brown dray. <laughs> <laughs> Make, Make up, up your the... mind, Mr. Mayor. Now, which is it? <laughs> which what? Gray or brown? <laughs> now, wait a minute. I didn't say it was a gray. I said gray. We know you did, Mr. Mayor. And when a man your age gets kittenish about... I was that, not being kittenish! <laughs> when I said it was a hay drought, a gray horse, horse, I was merely referring to the fact that when a horse is hitched to a roan, uh, I mean a dray, to a brown dray, a brown dray, a horse, of... the color has ice, you, it. <laughs> McGee. <laughs> yes? <laughs> There is a scale at the corner drugstore. Yes, we know that, Your Honor, but... And here are two pennies. What do we do with them? Go away. <laughs> well, I thought for a minute there you were going to have a chance for some real salesmanship, McGee. Ain't it been awful? Nobody will even let me open my... Hey, what are we stopping here for? This is the last call, dearie. Mr. McDonald. Oh, my gosh. After the way I popped off at him this morning, he won't give me a nickel. Oh, well, never let it be said that McGee didn't go down with flags flying. Come on, Sido. I represent the American Red Cross in this neighborhood. I... Well? Hello, Mr. McDonald. Uh, hi, Mac. <laughs> <laughs> remember the friendly little chat we had this morning about your banking hours? Of course I remember it. You ought to have your silly remarks tattooed on your scalp. They look good engraved on a pinhead. <laughs> well, uh, he came over to apologize, Miss McDonald. Yeah, I was just kidding, Mac. Now then, do you realize, McDonald, that the American Red I Cross... I know all about the Red Cross. I'm chairman of the drive. My check for... Wait a minute. That check made out for $1,000. What did I... Oh, my goodness. I must have left it at the bank. Oh, that's all right, Miss McDonald. We'll stop by and pick it up. You can't do that. 2.45. The bank's closed. What? The bank's closed at this time of day? Why, you penitentiary public parasite? <laughs> if you keep reasonable hours in that poor man's fort, knock. No, 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 just a minute, McGee. You don't realize. I do, too, realize. You keep your bank doors open just long enough for the morning deposit. You're so scared somebody will draw out a buck and a half. No. Don't, you, don't you talk to me like that, you petty larceny paper snatcher. All you come in my bank for is to steal blotter. <laughs> Fill your fountain pen. And when you come oh, in... just a darn minute, McDonald. Oh, this uh, is ridiculous. It's disappointing, but it doesn't look as if we'll get that new car for some time, does it? While you're waiting, how'd you like to make your old bus look almost as shiny and polished as a new one? Sound good? All right, here's the secret. Johnson's car new and surprisingly little of your time. Now, I don't mean the car new will turn an old Stanley steamer into a new Cadillac, but it honestly will make your car look 100% better. Car new is the famous wax-fortified liquid cleaner that both cleans and polishes in one application. All you do is apply car new, rubbing just hard enough to loosen up that old dirt that washing won't remove. Then let it dry to a powder. When you wipe away this powder, dullness disappears almost like magic. And, brother, I'm telling you, your car really shines. And talk about easy. Apply it, let it dry, wipe it off. That's the whole easy car new story. Why not get some from your dealer? It's spelled C-A-R-N-U. Johnson Car New. Ladies and gentlemen.
gentlemen, I don't think we have to give you any sales talk about the Red Cross either. So we'll just say give generously to them this year. You couldn't think of a better cause to save your lives. Good night. Good night, all. <laughs> This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax Products for Home and Industry, inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company.